I first got breast cancer when I was 43. When I was in early 50s, um, the cancer returned and um, had metastasized to my lungs. Um, at that point, I was still working full time. I um, worked in a small local rural post office. I remember returning back to work one morning, actually a couple of mornings in a week. And when I got to work, I didn't know how I got there. I, you know, and I thought, well, this is really strange. This must be residual from the chemo. And um, I called the nurse at my doctor's and I said, well, you know, is this just a residual from the chemo? And she, said, she laughed and she said, I think that's a panic attack. <laughs> and I really did at the time feel like um, kind of on shaky ground with my mental state. I talked to my doctor at the time. He suggested that I find somebody to see close to home. And I ended up finding Ellen. And um, she and I worked a lot on just being able to calm myself when I got panicked about stuff. And um, it just seemed the right thing to do was to start taking yoga classes with Ellen. And I found that it really, really helped me with, you know, um, the just keeping a balance in my life and not feeling panicked so much because one thing that happens is you you'll go along and you forget about it for a while and then all of a sudden it's right there in front of you again and it's not going away um for me one of the things is I, during my life i've i've I guess I've sort of always seen myself as kind of an angry person. And one thing that I realized when I was working with Ellen is that anger was taking up a lot of energy in my life. I had teenage daughters at that time, and I felt like I really needed to get my act together to help them through what was a really scary time. The stress from retaining anger and things like that was not going to be helpful in healing. I also, at times during my life, had been depressed. And one thing that really stands out for me about doing yoga is that, and it's not like, oh, aha moment. It's, I don't get as depressed as I used to. I think that's been really important for my family in terms of how I'm coping with the disease because People are always saying, well, I don't know how you manage this. How can you, you know, oh my God. And, and I don't feel that way about my disease at all. And it's, it's surprising to people that I, you know, most of the time I'm just living my life. I'm not, I'm not worrying about it. It's not that there aren't moments when I still can have a return of some feelings of panic or feelings of, of despair. I mean, because things are constantly changing when you're going through cancer, whether it's, um, you're taking a drug that causes a great deal of fatigue and nausea or you know trying to cope with some physical aspect of taking the drugs it's just been such a gift to do individual yoga with with ellen because um it helps me really focus more and um and i think it's been very important in terms of developing a at-home practice that is very individualized, that works for me, that addresses my specific um, uh, physical um, issues, whether it's my breathing, because, you know, the cancer obviously is in my lung, there's, there's you know, less breathing room. I feel like because a lot of it's the focus on my breathing that there's less of a panic feeling. I mean, I think sometimes I've, I've expressed to Ellen that there's times when I feel like I'm drowning, like I can't breathe. If I have a technique that I can go to when I feel that way to just calm my breath, that really helps reduce my anxiety about the physical things that are happening in my body. One thing I do, or I try to do a lot, and I was just thinking I'm doing it right now as I'm sitting here, is, is to slow down my breath. You know, when you're going from one place to another, just take the time to sit and breathe for a while. It's like almost all the time I feel like I have, I feel like I have to remind myself to do that. It's, I think that a lot of us walk around not, uh, not aware of how we're, our bodies are in the world, that we're tensing parts and, you know, I mean, it's made me observe how 
my body operates in this world. I remember talking with Ellen about how I used to be in the car and notice that my hands, I mean, part the first step was just noticing that you're tensing your body. And the next part is learning to relax it when you're in situations. The chanting, I think over time has, has helped me with my breathing. Because again, I have, I have the physical action and then the, the actual chanting to kind of gauge time. There's a, a chanting part in the beginning. Um, the om, antaya, hmm, is, uh, it's an exercise in which you embrace yourself and then your arms go out, but it, it's, it alludes to uh, strength and protection. Um, and then the second one is clicking your fingers around as you're going om, Anantaya, Padma, Pata, and um, that's referring to vitality and endurance. So that those two things are very short, but I try to sort of stop and really think about what those particular things mean after saying them. I really, and I think I've said this to Ellen, um, and, and actually other friends who were like puzzled by it, didn't quite understand it. I feel like my yoga practice is practice for dying. But the idea of meeting your death in as calm a way as possible, if, if you do believe that this isn't all, that maybe there will be some consciousness to the passage rather than just, it's gone, it's over. <laughs> So that just consciously embracing death and what is beyond. I, I sort of like that idea. I, li I think that that's part of what I think about when I think about practice for dying. Um, and the other part of that is practice for dying again is not allowing yourself to be overcome with panic or negative thoughts when you go, going calmly elegantly, and, and yoga's part of that, I think. Again, I like to think about being porous, about you're not just an individual, you're part of a whole. And just that concept of the body being somewhat a shell, and, and that part of what doing yoga does for you is to remind you that it's not just about this physical body, but that you go beyond that, your essence or your, your, your spirit goes beyond that porous body. I, I wish that more older people, you know, would, would take it up. And I think that's slowly changing. I mean, certainly practitioners like Alan are, are, are targeting that particular group. It's not exclusive to people who have physical attributes that allow them to twist themselves like a pretzel or whatever. That is so helpful for so many people and that it can be what you need. It doesn't have to be, it can be what you need, you personally need. And um, I don't know, that's, that's uh, I like to think that more people will discover that.